As an interior designer that does van life part-time, I find a lot of my inspiration on the road. I got asked by a viewer how travel inspires designers and how my recent travels as a van lifer has affected the way that I design. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my home and show you where I have found inspiration for my own designs and how you can use your travels to inspire your art as well. So first, we're going to be talking about this space, which is my living room. Now, I've spoken about this space on my channel before when I first repainted it, but I never really discussed the reason as to why I painted it red and what inspired me to paint it this color and also go with this color palette. And honestly, the main reason was because of a lot of Australia's native flora and fauna. Particularly with the flora here in Australia, I think they're really beautiful and you've got these really vibrant colors that you just don't see in the rest of Australia because it looks half dead. There was two particular plants that I was heavily inspired by, which was the bottle brush and the acacia tree. And I wanted to showcase those in a very non-literal setting, particularly when you're wanting to use a particular thing as inspiration. You don't want to be super duper literal about it, which I do have an example, but I'll blame my grandmother for that one. That wasn't me. The goal with this space, especially because it is a multi-purpose space, I film here, I edit here, I relax here. I wanted this space to just be inspiring no matter which angle you looked at. Obviously the color red can be quite overpowering, but I definitely made sure I muted it way down so that it wasn't going to be super duper overwhelming for me. And now, especially at night, I find this space super vibey and relaxing to be in, regardless as to whether or not I'm working for myself, YouTube, or even just to relax as well. But let's go check out a space that is completely different to this one. Okay, this is my impression of every 80 video ever. Okay guys, this is where the magic happens. So this space we've actually discussed on this channel before and I pretty much in short had to make over the space while my family were away on holidays. My entire family really wanted to do more of like a coastal theme throughout the home and since this is a spare bedroom I thought well, might as well give it a test run in one of the smaller spaces. But this particular room, obviously coastal can be such a broad term, but this particular room was inspired by my very first van trip and it's inspired by Manly Beach in New South Wales. Manly Beach has a bit of a soft spot in my heart because when I first did my very first van travel, I stayed at a hostel for a couple of days and made some really wonderful friends and we all went to Manly Beach together. And this beach, you know, it's a touristy beach. It's a beautiful Australian beach, but in all honesty, it looks like every other one. Obviously the coastal theme really did take a lot of hold on this space. Obviously we've got the blue, we've got the white timber and you know, the overall general aesthetic of coastal. But there are a few very subtle things that I did in this space that kind of just remind me of Manly and not necessarily of just every other beach. One of them being actually the artwork that I chose. Manly Beach is obviously a very touristy space. It's a place where a lot of people gather. There's a lot of cafes and it's just got beautiful architecture as well. And the art pieces, they're actually from Amazon. They just kind of gave me that community vibe and that vibe of, hey, you know, there's a whole bunch of people together. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. And especially because this is a spare bedroom, I really did want to bring people in and make people feel welcome in this space. Here in Australia, we are so fortunate with our beaches. Like the water is beautiful blue. The sand is really beautiful white color. And I feel like I did kind of do it justice in this space. Obviously it's not really obvious. It doesn't have manly written on the wall, but it's not meant to be. It's just meant to be subtle nods to the space. But yeah, I think this space is probably the most specific in terms of location that inspired me to do this space. And honestly, it's such a nice room. Like I'm so happy with this space. Obviously a few things have changed since that video. So you're welcome to check that out later, but there was like a mattress back there and that mattress is actually still in the van. So that's the mattress that I used for the van, but for storage purposes, it worked great as a headboard. So obviously it would have been great if I popped, you know, some cover on it, but <laughs> I was working with no budget. What can you do? 
Now this final space is definitely a work in progress in comparison to the other two rooms, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway, because it's always really interesting to see the progression of a space. And unfortunately we do kind of get marketed that, you know, home decor and all that is meant to be turned around in 24 hours or a very short period of time, thanks to television. So I thought it'd be nice to have a look at this space. Now this space is the main living and entertainment area. And the main goal for this space was to kind of give it that coastal theme, but to have it be more inspired by Croatia. Now, my mother is Croatian and she really wanted Croatia to be the inspiration for the home for the most part. And so I was looking at a lot of images and trying to pull out the parts of Croatia that we'd want to reflect in the space, but not have it as literal. A really great example is this beautiful lamp right here. Honestly, this lamp, is my pride and joy. I love it so much. Originally, it was actually meant for my living space upstairs, but it got claimed down here because it just looked so good. The real thing that I really loved about this lamp is that it did kind of reflect a certain aspect of Croatia. Now in Croatia, you've got these beautiful old homes with terracotta roofs, and they've got this very textured sort of sandstone rendering for the rest of the home. Now, unfortunately, my mother isn't a huge fan of terracotta, so we couldn't really utilize the terracotta tiles as inspiration, but we could utilize the rest of the architecture of the homes. And this particular lamp definitely has a very similar aesthetic to those homes. And I really also love the movement that is going throughout the space because it kind of gives you this washed up on the beach sort of vibe. This isn't the only thing that we're doing. We've got beautiful navy blue couches that definitely represent the ocean. And we're trying to add in more warmth into this space. One particular thing that we are starting to get our hands dirty with and try and figure out what we're going to do with is the backsplash in our kitchen. The kitchen is beautiful, it's large, but it is very bare and we wanna add some warmth back into the space. So again, we are taking inspiration by the coastline in Croatia. And we're wanting to do maybe a sandstone sort of look all the way up to the ceiling to add a little bit more of that texture that you see. And with that warmer tone, we'll make it a little bit more inviting as well. But also with our island, we're going to add some timber slats underneath the island bench to add a little bit more of that warmth as well as a contemporary sort of style. Just with those two things alone, it'll add a lot more warmth to the space and just have a little bit more personality as well. The goal of each space is different. For my living space, it is a space that I need to be creative in. So I don't want it to be super duper calming, but I do want it to gain inspiration for myself. So the color red definitely adds that more energetic vibe to it without it being overpowering specifically with the color that I chose. Whereas with the spare bedroom, I chose the color blue because blue is a more relaxing color on the eye and is much better for a better night's rest. And then down here, we're starting to add warming elements. So then it is a little bit more inviting for people and not as sterile as some of the more grays and whites and blues can be. Even though they're just very subtle nods to it, it definitely adds to the space and you can certainly feel it when you're in it as well. A designer that I am extremely influenced by is Justina Blakeney. And I think she's one of those great designers that can show you how to incorporate your travels through a whole plethora of different mediums. And I think she's one of those really unique artists that really can showcase it in a multitude of ways and doesn't just stay in one particular lane, which I love that about her. Obviously we're both color girlies. We both love color. She's a little bit more on the maximalistic side than myself, but you can really see how everything around her inspires her and changes the way that she creates. I think we often pigeonhole ourselves into looking at what other people are doing or looking at Pinterest and then we don't really see the inspiration that's around us. One thing that I've really just been enjoying lately is doing the more cinematic sort of vlogger sort of stuff because I can just show you what's inspiring me instead of just talking to you straight from the camera. I think just being able to show you what in the world it is in my mind that kind of just 
makes me happy and gets me inspired, I think that's a really nice thing. And you don't necessarily need to travel across the world to be able to do that. Sometimes it's just simply like looking out your window and being inspired by the trees. There's definitely one way that I certainly get stuck with and that is that I look at things on a very literal sense and sometimes I need to try and look at it in a more abstract way. So I thought I'd tell you today how I kind of break down these travels or even inspiring places or things and how I utilize it into my own designs. And this is definitely something you can use in different mediums as well. So first of all, I want you to get a picture or look at the thing that inspires you. Now look at the colors and pull out the colors. Is there red? Is there blue? Is there green? Personally, I like to do this on a piece of paper. So, you know, I'll go, okay, colors, what are the colors there? And then I'll write those down. Or if I've got a text, I'll color them in. Then after that, I want you to have a look at the particular shapes and repetitions that you see. Is it a checker pattern? Is there a lot of stripes going on? Is there a lot of movement? Is there none at all? Is it very minimalistic and just a very slow gradation of things? And then try and draw those a couple of times and see if you can draw them in a few different ways. So an example being stripes. So obviously you can do stripes in a very tight pattern or you could do them in a much larger pattern or you could do them horizontally, vertically or on an angle of some kind and see if that kind of gets things moving for you. Obviously, once you've got it down on a paper, you can kind of look at it and go, oh, OK, now I can see it in a more abstract sense rather than looking at the thing that you're actually looking at. And then you can utilize those particular elements into your space or into your art piece or into whatever it is that you're creating or wanting to create. But yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. I did mention quite a few videos today, so they will all be linked down below. And I will also link it down anything that kind of resembles anything that has been shown in this video. Obviously, a lot of the things that I collect are typically secondhand, so a little bit harder to find, but I'll link as many items as I can down below if you're inspired by a lot of those or if you want them for yourself. There will be a lot more van life content coming, so definitely stick around and tap the bell and button if you haven't already, and I will see you on our next adventure.